Alright, let me get over there. Double honors to the elder apostle DMS who do well. Salute you, brother. Just pushing this word and truth to sincerity and strength. Pai Yahweh by Shemel Rashad. Shalom to you. Uh, and Shalom to you, brothers and sisters, that's growing in trust in the spirit and power. Yahweh by Shemel Rashad. Shalom to you, too. All right. We are here to prophesy the downfall of this wicked, destructive kingdom known as Babylon the Great and gather the elect. Out of the Negro like to those in Native Americans, because according to the King James Bible, the Negro like to those in Native Americans are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites. Alright? And we are here to gather the elect with the spirit of power, Yahweh Shema was shot. Okay? We just teach the word with the spirit of power, Yahweh Shema was shot, as a vessel, serving Yahweh Shema was shot, and Yahweh Shema was shot, waking up the elect. Okay? By the nation of Israel, man wherever this word may go. And like I was saying, prophesy the downfall of this wicked destructive kingdom known as Babylon the Great, Sodom and Gomorrah, Egypt, Assyria, all those ancient empires balled up in the one that bring confusion on the earth, you know, and it's destined to be destroyed. So, it's a lot going on, you know, it's a lot going on with these false prophets they popping up more and more and more. Uh, now bubbleize is popped back up. GOCC, you know, now he popped back up. And uh, brothers is getting on him, which he been out of there. You know, bubbleize sold out a long time ago, but he didn't pop back up. You know, saying that uh, uh, the Gentiles uh, is talking about. When it's talking about salvation, he's saying that those Gentiles, when the scriptures talk about salvation, he's talking about all of this. He out of his mind. You know, yeah. he's gone, man. He's gone, man. I remember when Bubble Eyes, when Bubba was talking about Bubble Eyes, was talking about mermaids was real. Yeah, from GOCC, man. He was talking about mermaids was real, man. <laughs> he bugged out, man. But hey, you got Jake out there like that, man. So, you brothers and sisters, you know, on the, on the web, you got a lot of false prophecies out there. You see a lot of them, man. You know, you better be careful on who you watching. You know, GMS is the one, man. GMS is standing strong. Try with the other boss of GMS, the rest of the world, on down. You're standing strong with the truth, man. The rest of these guys is out of there, man. Right? But what I want to do is uh, have the brother read uh, Proverbs uh, 21 and uh, 1. When I got some news clips I want to show. And Lord willing, you can hear us. You know, hopefully it's not uh, when there's uh, uh, that's distorting the sound, distorting my voice, so to speak, okay? Hopefully it's not wind blowing the way you can hear us, you know? But, uh, I'm gonna have the brother read it. Now we good, man. That's why I was letting them know, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna kind of speak a little bit louder. This is a uh, this is Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1 it says the king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh by Hashem Yahusha as the rivers of water he turneth it whithersoever he will yeah that's how the most high Yahweh Hashem Yahusha get down and hold what you got because I'm gonna show them this clip and we're gonna read that one more time before we jump okay. Listen close. 
and this is about Putin. Okay? Them Russians. Listen close. Like Ukraine, for example, like Georgia, uh, all their interests should be taken into account and there should be a big discussion to take place to try to work out some kind of working relationship with Russia that will move this whole process forward. The, the, the question that no one can answer, and it was asked of Vladimir Putin yesterday, is he planning to invade Ukraine? Uh, Vladimir Putin said he didn't want to do it, but he did say something which was quite alarming and quite aggressive during that press conference with uh, Emmanuel Macron, and that was that if NATO were to be uh, taken in, or, 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 or if Ukraine were to join NATO, and then NATO and Ukraine tried to take back Crimea, then he would have no problem in sending in a nuclear weapon, uh, saying that the West wouldn't even have time to blink before that nuclear weapon went off, but that he didn't want to uh, do that. But uh, really what Vladimir Putin wants is for NATO not to be involved in any former Soviet states. That is, I think, a no-go uh, discussion point between the European Union, between Emmanuel Macron, uh, the United States and Russia. So we still haven't solved this great problem. It's a little bit of an ongoing negotiation. And I think Emmanuel Macron thinks that the first step is getting the Minsk protocol back on, the, on, on track, and then we can work towards other ways of trying to defuse this crisis and to de-escalate uh, this build-up of troops. So you hear it. what the news is saying concerning Russia. They were saying that Vladimir Putin was saying, look, if they come and try to take Ukraine and they uh, uh, end up taking uh, Crimea, the West, talking about America, won't even have time to blink, man, for that nuke drop. Okay? Before he push the button, man, they won't even have time to blink. Okay? So, that's how Russia is talking, man. I remember when Vladimir Putin wasn't even talking like that. Okay? But, that's the power of the Hawash and was shot, got Vladimir Putin warning you dumb Americans and you people in the world, okay, that's wrapped up in your folly and can't see. But that warning is for the elect to see. So look, I right, get yourself together. Pray for deliverance and get yourself together, man. Because Pooh is talking like that. You won't even have time to blink, man. Okay? And the scriptures, uh, and the scriptures speak of that. Okay? The way he talking. Okay? Now, I got another one. So read that for me again, bro. This is Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. The king's heart, the king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, as the rivers of water. He turneth whithersoever he will. Yeah. And I'm gonna play this one. I'll show you. Alright, I'm gonna show you this one. Now, this video, well, I'm going to show it to you. For two peoples, wars are fought by two economies. And that's why historians talk about war machines. You need guns, missiles, fighter jets, warships. And all of this costs money. Vladimir Putin says that he's ready for anything. He's even talking about Russia's big nuclear arsenal. If war breaks out, Putin will not shy away from firing his nukes. That's what he says. Of course, NATO's armament potential and Russia's are not comparable, and we understand that. But we also understand that Russia is one of the leading nuclear powers and ahead of many countries in its modernity. There will be no winners. What do you say? Those are ominous words. What do you say? We understand that. But we also understand that Russia is one of the leading nuclear powers and ahead of many countries in its modernity. There one more time. Let me hear this.
Heard what he said? And we understand that. But we also understand that Russia is one of the leading nuclear powers and ahead of many countries in its modernity. There will be no winners. Those are ominous words from the Russian president. Maybe he does have the appetite for war. But can his economy bankroll it? On paper, the NATO is far ahead. Russia's total GDP is around $1.7 trillion. NATO, more than $18 trillion. Russia never really recovered from the shock of 1991. Their growth rate is less than 2%. Inflation is around 8%. And foreign trade is pinned on one sector, oil and gas. Around 50% of Russia's exports come from this sector, oil and gas. If the West shuts that tab, Russia's foreign trade is going to collapse. The fact is, their economy is struggling. Growth should be the priority for Moscow right now. Fighting a war is out of the question. Having said that, we are not talking about a conventional leader. We are talking about Vladimir Putin. He does not follow the playbook. I can give an example from 2014. Putin ordered his troops to invade Crimea. Even then, Russia's economy was struggling. It was on the brink of a recession, but Putin invaded anyway. So economy alone may not influence Moscow's choice. I can give you two reasons why. Number one, Putin has calibrated his economy to survive a war. And number two, he's not expecting NATO to join this fight. Russia's central bank reserves stand at $640 billion. That's equal to 17 months of export revenue. If oil gets more expensive, that pile will keep growing. Plus, Putin has taken the Russian economy away from the US dollar. I'll tell you how. In 2013, around 95% of Russia's trade was done in dollars. Today, around 10%. But if Putin had a, has abandoned the dollar, what is he trading in? Well, gold. In 1995, Russia's gold reserves were at $2 billion. Today, $130 billion. The bottom line is this. If you think logically, Russia should not invade Ukraine. It should focus on economic growth. But if Putin does choose to invade, Russia is not going to collapse. Its economy can sustain a short war. If NATO stays out, that's what it will be, a short war. So why is Putin reluctant? Well, he ignored the economy in 2014 and invaded Crimea. So why is he rethinking now? Because annexing Crimea was a popular move. I may get into trouble for saying this, standing here in Kiev. That's what I want y'all to hear, man. Putin saying, Putin saying, Vladimir Putin is saying it ain't gonna be no winners. Yes, it is. It's gonna, Israelites are gonna win it. See? The nigga like to know if they're black, they're gonna win it. See? Yeah. They're gonna, and these other nations, they're gonna lose everything. You see? But I wanted y'all to hear that and hear how Yahweh Shema was shy have got the mind of Putin. And whoever, uh, whatever president of Russia, whether it be Putin or somebody else, y'all watching that shot, got the mind of them kings, man. And Vladimir Putin, let's talk about news, man. If war break out. You see? Why would you take the best steps? But you weren't talking okay, like so that. Just to go to so he's talking about nukes, man. Right? So give me what you got. And it was prophesied in the scriptures that the second death is going to be, the first death was the flood. Right. Prophesied in the scriptures that the second death is going to be with fire. And what can cause that? Nukes. Read what you got, bro, in Proverbs. Yeah, Alright, this is uh this is Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh by some Yahusha. So the mind of these kings on the earth in the mind of Vladimir Putin is in the power of Yahweh Shah. So Yahweh Shah got Vladimir Putin mind, right? See? And the way they were talking in the news, saying, uh, hoping NATO don't get involved in World War III because this is this is this is the stage of it, World War III. But like I always tell you, the hotbed is in the Middle East, so-called Middle East. That's where the hotbed is at. 
Gotta keep an eye on them. Gotta keep an eye on them. Uh, yeah, it's Esau Edom. You gotta keep an eye on them Israelis. They gotta keep an eye on Iran too. See? Because the Middle East, so called Middle East, was a hotbed. But, like I was saying, Yahweh Shina was shy, got the mind of Putin, man, according to the scriptures. Go ahead, bro. It says, uh, I'll start up again. It says, uh, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. The king's heart is in the hands of Yahweh, in the hand of Yahweh by some Yahweh shot. Right. As the rivers of water. So, just as Yahweh Shema was shot, controlled the rivers of water, destroyed the way he wanted to go, same way he got Vladimir Putin's mind. He going to steer the way he wanted to go with this nuclear war. Go ahead, bro. He turned it whithersoever he will. He turned it whatsoever he will. He's doing uh, what he pleased to the mind of Vladimir Putin, man. Because it goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to where Jacob received their promise and out of this nuclear war, the winner is going to be Jacob because they're going to get the promise. Okay? Which is to rule the earth forever. Now, the whole earth ain't going to be destroyed. Like it tells you in uh, Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, okay? The earth abided forever. Okay? So when people say, the whole earth is going to be destroyed. Nah. The earth will bother forever, man. Read Ecclesiastes in the first chapter, man. All right? Jump in. All right? Jump into uh, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 12. It says, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. There is a generation that is pure in their own eyes. That's why they call themselves white. Because they think they're pure. See? But they didn't put that term on them till 1681. That's when they made the law. Okay? It was two events that took place to where they passed uh, a law in 1681 to call themselves white. Okay? But going back deeper, they did paint pictures of themselves with that pigment of so-called white right. but they didn't make it long until 1681 right there was two events that happened that caused them to uh call themselves white in 1681 so when you look up the word white it means pure okay look it up in the etymology online it basically means pure okay go ahead it says uh and yet is not washed from their filthiness. And yet is not washed from their filthiness. So what I want the brothers to do is look up the word filthiness and see what we got right here. Yeah. Y'all got to excuse me. Today, Friday, I've been at work. I've been up since four this morning, so I'm a little tired and I'm a little sleepy. So we going, okay? But today Friday, man. What's the day? Day the eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Friday, uh, February eleven, two thousand twenty-two. And we're looking up the word built.
outside. It's a uh, filth. It says filth. Extra bit. Ah, yeah, extra bit. When you look it up, it's basically dung. S H I T. Shit. Okay. Okay. So when you look up the word filthiness right there, and what? Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 12. And you look up the word filthiness right there. It goes into excrement, which is dumb or shit, so to speak. Okay. So, see what we got? Sure. Yeah, if I may. I don't really want to search something out. Let the brother search something out. If you want to search something out, let him search it out. Y'all bear with me. Because in the strong, in the strong's lexicon, it goes into uh, into uh, so, uh, soil. Okay, okay. and uh, when you look up that word, it goes into you know defiled or polluted with sin. Okay, uh, it goes into pig, make dirty, to make dirty. But what I was trying to get is because that word. I've heard it used, like like the elder said, I've heard it used meaning shit. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And Extra. Then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and then when you look in the Strong's lexicon, uh, in the blue letter, in the blue letter, it says, uh, especially of uh, human. Yeah, 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 so it's shit, okay? So go back and read that again. Oh, 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 oh. what we got, what it's we got? It's Strong's definition. <laughs> that's safe, that's Esau Edo, man. He's circling the block. Yeah, he's circling the block, man. Esau Edo. He must have came across some videos, man. Well, he's seen this out here before. Oh, okay, okay. I yeah, think I know see, who That's he why he's talking like that. Yeah, he's I think, seen I, think I remember. Before. Yeah, I think you I remember. But he thinks the Heavenly Father's son name is Jesus and he thinks he looks like this. Right. She's your boy's here. You right. see what I'm saying? But her. Yeah, but, uh, but her. And we got a daddy down there like that. Okay. It's okay. idle. But I uh, I found it in Strong's definitions. It says uh pollution. Dumb. Yeah, 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 yeah. Filth. Yeah, filth. Dumb. No. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay, go ahead. We're going right. back now. We're going back. So, so we want to go to Proverbs 30 and 12 and read that one more time, right? right? So this is Proverbs chapter 30, verse 12. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes. That's Esau Edom, so called white man. This is a biblical nationality. Edom, Edom. Yeah, a nation of Edomites. Okay? Go ahead. And yet it's not washed. From their filthiness. From his own shit. You see? Yep. So they think they're pure, but they filthy. Like shit. And that's why they're not gonna be winners at the end of this thing. See? They, they are filthy, man. You do see a lot of Edomites, and I know anybody can fucking have seen it. But see, it's deeper than that. Right. Just looking at them. They spirit. Right. right. See? It's deeper than that. Just looking at them, we know they are filthy. Okay? We know they're off top. Okay? But it's deeper than that. And the spirit that's in them is like dumb. Right. Right. See? Right. That's why they're not going to be winners. 